Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and happy Monday to all. Or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, happy whatever day of the week it may be. Regardless, we checked out the title track. It was great fun indeed. But we've got the rest of the music that dropped today. We've got the album listen for the one of a kind mini album, Lucembles' second mini album, which is tremendously exciting indeed. If the title track was anything to go off of, one of a kind, this album could be good fun indeed. Get to see bits and pieces, you know, we'll figure out the improvement of them as the new ensemble. I see, I've got the album credits pulled up over here on the second screen right below the webcam. I see some familiar faces. I see some familiar names in the composition side of things, which is super cool. Maybe I think Lucembo are starting to piece together a music team for themselves, which is maybe super cool. I mentioned in the title track, the five sound more locked in than during Sensitive, which admittedly was, I think, pretty hard to do, but they sound more locked in this time, this time around. And yeah, I'm super excited. We've got a few songs to get through, and let's just do just that. Here we go! Right, T.O. Uh, so this is an 8-track mini-album, which I believe is the same as last time around with uh, Sensitive Era. Uh, track number 8 is an instrumental for Girls' Night, which is great for me because I love instrumental tracks, but we're not going to be doing it here. And then track number 1 is an intro, so a very short song. So what we have... And Girls' Night, the title track, we've already done a video on, so that's minus that. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half songs to go through. Sounds like a plan to me. All right, here we go. Track and uh, number one. Intro, parentheses, a butterfly's signal. Lyrics by Owen X. Uh, composition, Tesok and 77 Child. Same team on arrangements. Here we go. Oh, and no lyric videos, mainly because I'm recording this pretty close to drop. Quite loud. Mm. Okay, so that's an intro song that tell, tells a story more than... Right? Or, or does it prepare you for the album? Is there going to be a song that sounds like it in the intro? Ooh. Intro songs are kind of hard to talk about, mainly because, well, I don't know the context of what the, how the song has been used yet. This, well, obviously this is track number one on an album listen that I haven't heard the songs to. Um, ooh, this could be interesting. The glitchiness kind of scared me at first a little bit, but given the kind of sci-fi concept of the MVs that we've gotten so far, I can understand where it's coming from. The little spoken elements with the nice long reverb. Yeah, I guess this is just one of those we'll find out when we find out things, isn't it? Um, okay, so again, I explained earlier we're going to skip Girls' Night because, well, I've already spent some time on that individually. We'll go through the credits real quickly, though. Like, Girls' Night, Heju on lyrics, uh, Weekly, Justin uh, Reinstein, and Jijin on uh, composition, Weekly on arrangements. But track number three, this is Moonlight, all one word. Uh, lyrics by Miss Yojin. Uh, composition ends. <gasps> Miss Adora, good to see you, ma'am. And then Jinsol, with Jinsol and ends on arrangements. Adora got involved. That's great. I love Adora, man. I love what she's doing. Oh, it's soft. Wait, hold on. 
Will this ramp up, or will it stay this way? Nice flip. Oh, it's gonna stay here. That's not the drop I expected. It's interesting how the bass is super muffled here. Halftime at reverse too, okay. Subtle bit of auto tune going on here as well. Vocal harmony this time around, okay. Honestly, with that riser in the pre chorus, or with the way the song builds in the pre chorus, I was fully expecting like a kind of slower, full, like bright EDM drop. Not this, though. This is more along the lines of what I expected from the initial chorus release, not as a post chorus, though. And it's still kind of muffled, which is really interesting, like texturally. And then it goes super clear again. Octave harmony pitched down, very interesting texture, again. Love all the little vocal elements going on here. What an interesting song. This one, I was about to say you you listen to music with your ears. I mean, that's a given, isn't it? You listen with your ears, idiot. But you know how you like people say you eat with your eyes or what? It's like you you acquire a human sense based off of some, somewhere that you normally wouldn't. It's like you eat with your eyes. If something looks appetizing, it's going to your brain's probably going to interpret it as being appetizing. This is a song that I can like feel with my ears, which is really interesting to me. Especially the mixing they did with that chorus drop. It's, they keep that chorus pretty muffled in the instrumental part, which is super interesting. The, not the kind of EDM sound I expected, uh, as I mentioned already, but it's what what is? I thought it would, like the release was gonna be something like Coldplay, something just like this, a little bit more punchier on the brighter brighter uh, treble synths and stuff. No, they kept that locked down and with the muffled filter, and then. You have the pitch down, like octave harmonies in the background, adding a little bit more of that kind of crunchy texture to the vocals in the pre choruses and post choruses. And yeah, this is a very texturally busy song, which makes listening to it really interesting because you can kind of piece together differently every single time depending on what you're listening to. Hmm. Hmm. I am a little bit sad it didn't have like a bright, bright EDM release like. I was kind of hoping it would. My inner EDM head was screaming at me during that, but you know what? I don't really have any qualms about it. It's just the creative direction is not what I expected. Let's leave it at that. All right, track at number four. This is Boomerang. Uh, lyrics by Joe Jung Young. Composition uh, Bailey Flores, Matthew 
Tornson, Tornton, and then True Feels on Arrangement. And the synth is Wow Oh, this song is sending me for a trip. Hello, Super Break. Okay. This song is sending me for a friggin' trip. Weirdly, this is giving me, like... Hello Future era NCT Dream vibes in the kind of wacky comp like uh, top line direction this is taking. It's like there's moments in this song where they really lean into the bright side of things, and there's other stuff where they lean into the really hard side, and it constantly changes. Get smooth and slow with it for the bridge, okay? was kind of magical. Okay, boomerang's a trip. Hey, much like the physical action that a boomerang takes goes goes out and then comes back, this song really goes out in one direction and comes back in another one, doesn't it? Wow. And again, it's something about it is giving me Hello Future vibes. I did not think I would get that kind of sound from Lucem from a Lucemble B side, but that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. It's I I think the chorus, especially when there's post choruses that just get super melodic. I think that creates such a cool listening experience. But also this song, especially in the verses and specifically in verse one feels like it's like fighting itself in a way where it it doesn't really know if it wants to be bright or if it wants to be hard and so it constantly goes back and forth and it's like you're watching a battle within the song and then all of a sudden it, fa it changes phases in pre-chorus one and then it changes again in the chorus and now it's like oh, where am i i'm lost now but when you listen to it it's freaking glorious and that the length of that post chorus or the bridge after the second course, oh, oh my goodness, you know what? I don't usually do this on album listens, but...
the fact that it just keeps it going. It really is like, it's like, I'm gonna drop another NCT Dream song in here for a second, but it's like they've taken the brightness of Hello Future with the glory and the magnitude of the bridge from Broken Melodies, which is two, they're two of my favorite NCT Dream songs, but it's long, this bridge is long, but it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it levels up every single time it keeps going and it's kind of glorious. Also, main vocalist Hyunjin is on different gravy this time around. Oh my goodness. I love her voice too. I'm so glad we get to hear more of her voice this way. Right, track uh, number five. This is He Said, I Said. Lyrics by Guava and Kim Mingu of the music team Nine, along with Miss Vivi. Uh, composition Kim Mingu, Yi Ye Jun. Guava, Funny Bow, and Kim Taeyong, all from the music team Nine, and arrangement by Yi Ye Jun, Funny Bone, and Kim Mingu of Nine. Glad to see the Nine team back. They did really good work first time around. I like the vibes, not too quick, a little bit bright. That chord sequence at the very end there was super cool. They didn't keep it in the four chord formula. I like that. Like this album, we kind of got another cutesy-ish song again. I, I like how pronounced you can hear the strums in the instrumental part. Like they didn't take the time to like, instead of like muffling it, it's good time to keep it. Because it adds such a nice texture to the song. I don't know what it is about it, but this one's playing to my heart a little bit. Oh, I completely forgot. <laughs> I was enjoying the vibes too much that, oh yeah, rap, rap verses exist too. Cool stack. Nice little decelerando into the accelerando. Oh, and they do it again. They kind of little stutter step into the drop for the final chorus. Okay, that's really good. That's really good. Hey, like, it's kind of me in a way. Like, the song is a little bit of me. Mm, mm. And it's honestly, in terms of how the song has been put together, it's probably the simplest song on the album so far. But I think that's kind of the charm of it for me is that there isn't really any place to go wrong with it. The formula is super nice. 
beat super nice the melody super nice and it's this is one of the everyday playlist songs for me where i can just pop it on listen to it and just kind of be on my merry way without a care in the world just enjoy the music and i like a song like that sometimes or it's I like to call them autopilot songs or your uh, life BGM songs, life OST songs, where I can really play this in any sitting and I could be okay with it. Like, I don't have to worry too hard about not jamming along to the music, for example. I can just pop it on, go about my business, and just go wherever I need to go, do what I need to do, and I can just, it brightens up my day a little bit more. Oof. Yeah, that one's a little bit on me. I like that. I like it. Okay. Track number six. This is Truman Show. Uh, lyrics by Minin, Miss Evil of Luna. For uh, Oh, it says Evil of Luna. <laughs> I'm sad again. But Miss Evil's back on the writing side of things, who also has been working pretty closely with the Music Team 9. So that's super cool to see her again. Hopefully her... She's been hinting solo works. She joined the company and she's been hinting solo works, which is tremendously exciting. And Miss Koan on lyrics as well. Keep her moving. Composition. Kim Min-gu, Che Wu Jong, Minin, all from Nine, and then Miss Ibu. And arrangements. Che, che Won Wu Jong and No, no to Z Cat. N O number two Z C A T. Don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but all right, send it. Truman Show, a show that I didn't watch. Really slow it down one time. Yeah, it's really slow. The build is promising though, hold on, let it cook. Okay, it's kind of anthemic in a way, I like it. Long rebuild for the second half there. I like where that went. I like where that went. It's slow, but it's bright. It's big. It's got a nice amount of power to it. The panning guitars is a cool touch, too. This one's punchy in all the right places. And even though the instrumental part is pretty big, it's not overshadowing the vocals at all. The vocals are per like properly put front and center. That's, one, that's another one of those songs where you just sit back and enjoy. You don't need to do too much.
Nice, nice. I love a good anthem song. It's... This is, I think, another one of those songs where, even though it is a little bit slower and possibly a little bit more emotional feeling, it's an everyday song for me. And that's very nice. It's actually got a quite a pronounced build, more than I expected it to. Like, once that full flourish came around, it's big. It's a big song. And yet it doesn't feel too imposing. Sometimes when a song grows to like a really big level, there's a hint of worry. It's like, oh, this is a lot to take in at once. Or like, this is, this is like getting a little bit out of control big. Never felt that about Truman Show. It's one of those where you feel the swell and you feel it grow and then you feel it release. And while it's big, it never feels like it's overtaking you or it's like it's consuming you in a way. It just, it just goes and that's it. And I think that's nice. It's really controlled. And I love the little uh, arrangement and like composition stuff they did, especially in the post-production parts where they kind of pan the instruments. Whenever the like physical instrument sounds in the instrumental section almost had like ad lib moments, they purposely panned it instead of bringing it in the middle to add a little bit of a add a little bit of a listening experience. Admittedly, if you're listening it, it listening to it on mono mode, where both left and right channels are blended together you won't notice a difference but if you've got stereo mode and you've got two separate speakers for left and right channels or you know in your ears both left and right channels i think you'll appreciate the little a textural addition that adds nice very nice and then one final song for the album listen to d of course track number this is track number seven starlight Track number eight does exist, but again, it's an instrumental track from Girls' Night, which is great for me because I love instrumentals, but we're not going to listen to it here. But track number seven, Starlight, lyrics by Hyunjin. Full stop. Composition, Alina Smith, Annalise Morelli of 153 Junbus Liar, and Gino Barletta with arrangements by Liar. 153 Junbus is a, is a music team that is everywhere. And the quality of work they do is top tier. So. Now, the question is, ballad or not? Or are we going to get back-to-back -back anthems? It's kind of sounding anthem -y, but there could be a big ramp up later. It's another anthem. Nice pairing in the vocals. With a post course too, hello. It's got big epilogue vibes coming from it. Like this is a great album ender because it feels like it's wrapping up in a way. It's got kind of bittersweet goodbye but not forever vibes if that makes sense. Like I could definitely see this being played as the last song on a set list. release is super nice too. It's a gentle release. It doesn't like hit you with the mean right hook at all, but it's very noticeable. I, I mentioned at the beginning, but I, there's so much vocal harmony work going on in this song, too. And it's uh, it's been con consistent throughout. Ooh, 
like like floor floor at a concert this type of vibe it's it exudes encore epilogue story I don't know why, but Starlight makes me a little bit sad listening to it, because it does, it, like, there's certain albums and certain artists that can do the finale song really well, and oftentimes, I mean, I don't, it's, I'd probably say six or seven out of ten times on a pop album, you usually save the ballad or the fan song until the end, just because it's got the most emotional value and it's a great way to wind the project down. Starlight, for me, though, it's not... A slow ballad, not not by any means. It's a gorgeous anthemic song. And yet it makes me sad listening to it because the entire time I'm listening to it, all I can think of is this is the end. Like this is the final song. And that just that idea of this song being like the finale is so strong. The essence of that is so strong. I don't think I've ever come across a song on the channel that has given off such strong end of the road vibes for me actually not end of the road because that makes it sound like this is a disbandment song but like the end of ending of a concert song like we've come across a few that have done like showcased that really well but this makes me feel it in on like a spiritual and emotional and a physical value that's really interesting to me and i mean just the song in general, super pretty. I kind of like that we got two anthems in a row to finish. While I think the members could pull off a really good ballad, or it doesn't even need to be like slow and emotional. It could be a little bit of a more upbeat ballad, something like, you know, Dance on My Own from Paint the Town era. But I think they could pull off a ballad sound really well. And yet they went with two consecutive anthem sounds. And they're both spectacular. They, honestly, Truman Show and Starlight are up there for favorite songs. Boomerang still is going to give me nightmares just because it's... That, take, that boomerang takes you on such a trip. But yeah, Truman Show and Starlight is such a strong do one two finish. And they play off of each other so well too. Because Truman Show kind of sets you up. And then Starlight is just straight into the feelies. And it's... Mm, it's really pretty. It's really good. Oh man. Okay, the um the second mini album is terrific. It's genuinely terrific. Um I will say this though, I don't really quite know how intro of Butterfly Signal connects to the rest of the songs, but I'm not gonna complain too much. The album itself is super pretty. It's got this oddly easy to listen to quality for as busy as some songs may get. I can definitely put this in like a daily shuffle where I can listen to it on an everyday basis and there's so many different applications where I could listen to it where it's I don't really need to like be in a specific mood to enjoy the songs if that makes sense. Sometimes you come across a song where I need to be in a very specific mood or like a very specific place to really enjoy. But this Lucemble album just pop it on whenever and just vibe it's a great time and plus it comes with an instrumental track and that gets bonus points from me because i know people like i don't know if this was as prevalent back in the day like 10 years ago but people nowadays don't like instrumental tracks because they kind of treat it as a filler to like make the album seem bigger than it actually is but I love it when Naris puts an instrumental track because I like listening to the instrumental track. Like, I have an entire case. Hold on. Where's that playlist? Uh... Nope, that's K-Band. Like, I have an entire playlist of just instrumentals from like K-pop and J-pop that I just love listening to. And sometimes you just you want the instrumental track. You want to appreciate and enjoy the instrumental track. And... Thank you, Lucembo, for providing that opportunity for me. But that is it from me today with Lucembo's most recent drop. It was great fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. 
One last request from me today, let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be you know, checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day to day. And know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be. Even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time. Know that I will always be a friend, ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.